Welcome back, guys. Now we're going to talk about making sure that we get the right components, mm -hmm. situations on this roof to write this estimate correctly back at the office and Xactimate. And one issue, you got code issues, you got how thick is this when we do our core. We got all kinds of stuff on the roof that got to be manipulated by the roofers. But let's talk about this ponding, Justin. What's going on with this ponding back here? It's so essentially what happened on this. Can we walk over there? It looks like I'm going to fall no, through no, that. No, no, no. You can't <laughs> yeah. walk over there. So, don't, don't cross the line. Yeah, it's actually ponded so long that it's gone through the EPS foam and through the plywood. And so it's rotted out completely. Which, by the way, is not related to the storm. That's just a general construction issue. Yeah, but it's... it's but it's got to be brought up to code. It's still got to be rectified. And so it has a taper on it now. It's not sufficient. So we'll end up tapering it again. And is that a code in this area for Absolutely. commercial properties? It's a code everywhere. So it's an IBC code going back, uh, I think, to 2003. So it shouldn't be an issue ever getting it paid for for slope issues. So when we go back to the office today or tomorrow, it's getting a little late, right. and write this estimate, um, are we going to automatically include, do we know if this property has code upgrade and is that an issue? This property does have code upgrade. They do have code yes, upgrade. we verified that and uh, we will be putting in the engineered taper system so we get the proper drainage on this. And are you able to write that correctly and Xactimate without an engineer? Are you no. no. So Xactimate does not have the proper line items for a taper system, so it's a bid item. Sub bid item? Yes. So you get a sub bid on it and override the, you no, put it as a manual? No, it's an internal bid. So whatever company it is, this is Northwest Roofing, and so this would be something that we bid. Um, some people actually get the taper system bid from the manufacturer and provide that. Okay. It's not a sufficient way to do it, in my opinion, because you don't make any money on it. It doesn't account for your labor, but Might be good to get it from the actual roofing sub. Yeah. Because then you got then way. you got proof of sub bid coordination. Yeah. Your GC overhead and profit. Yep, absolutely. All right, guys, we're walking along here. What the hell is all this stuff on the roof? This right here is an AT and T cell phone tower. This is the reason they get good service over here in Verizon don't work. <laughs> <laughs> this is a cell phone tower. Absolutely. absolutely. Okay, so this has all got to come off, it right? It does. It does. And there's some structural issues on this one specifically, so we're going to be able to raise it up just a couple of feet. Um, now, do you got to hire the AT&T sub, or can you yes. just bring a crane out here? You have to have an AT&T. Because they got to recalibrate it and the whole deal, right? They got to do all that, and they're the only ones that can do it. They're expensive as hell, so we're getting our GCOMP. Uh, but we got to coordinate. Have you already brought the sub over here to start coordinating, yeah, writing yeah, that bit up? He's already been over here, done that. What's a dollar amount for you? I mean, it's a big apparatus, goes all through the it's roof. A, it's, I think for this one, it's about 23k to detach yeah. and reset. Um, these cable trays have to be moved, obviously. Um, and AT&T will give you an authorized retailer and the only person that's allowed to touch this equipment. Um, so at that point, the insurance company can't tell you that you have to go and get another bid or anything like that. That's the person that's authorized to deal with it. Their invoice. The more the more you guys talk, the more I'm just hearing GC overhead and profit yeah, for some reason. Absolutely. General <laughs> contractor overhead and profit <laughs> up the yin yang. So guys, when you're on a complicated flat roof like this, look around. I mean, you got TV antennas, AT&T phone towers, vents. Swamp coolers, there's stuff over here we haven't got to yet. Uh, but guys, there's a ton of stuff up here that has to be taken into account. You gotta write that down, take pictures, because when you go back and write that estimate, if you don't capture all the stuff in Xactimate or get the right pre sub bid items oh, yeah. to enter in your manuals in Xactimate, you're gonna lose a lot of money, leave a lot of money on the table, and you might be left oh. high and dry with some low profit margins later on. Okay, guys, moving right along. I keep seeing stuff on top of this <laughs> roof. What is it, a house? We gotta move it? Yeah, this right here is protecting all the tower equipment over here that's necessary to run the towers. And so we gotta lift all this off too? We gotta crane this off too. You know, this roof right here is gonna be built up almost six inches from where it is now. And so this has gotta be lifted up, put down six inches of roof, five inches of ISO, half inches of uh, jip board, then we're going back. So how long does that crane operator gotta be? He's gotta be here for tear off? Yes. He's going to have to be here to, you know, is he going to take it all the way off the roof and set it down? Oh, in this situation, they're not taking this one all the way off. They're going to lift it lift up it up feet and hold it there. Okay. And so... Then we're going to tear off and install in that, under that area while the crane operator's here. Yeah. Okay, and so that's going to be a couple days. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Be a couple days. Absolutely. And it's 120 foot. So, that's an expensive crane. Okay, let's move on over here, guys. You sure we can walk over here? Like where? Hey, we're good right there. <laughs> All right, guys, we see further signs of collateral damage. Obviously, we can see that was the three inch hail on there. Oh, that's good some side of those are right there, some man. of that's big hail. Yeah. So that's also something we want to include in our estimate, but it also shows proof to those insurance judges that hail did hit this roof. Yeah, we didn't make it up. Unless well, you believe in UFOs. The membrane, <laughs> now, Frankie, what are we doing? We got a, looks like an emergency repair. Is this where you cord the roof? And we don't want to take it up. I don't want to take it up. So the PAs had 
had uh, in the insurance carrier had done a core on the other side of the roof and it only showed one inch of EPS foam. And if you look, you see that there's ponding right here in the middle of the roof, Anthony. So we did a core on this side just to make sure that it was consistent. And it turns out the roof actually has an engineered taper system. So there's actually two inches of EPS foam on this side when it's cut back. And that's something that we're gonna get taken care of in the appraisal process. Nice. Um, so you cord it, you know, they, a lot of times they recommend coring it in multiple areas so that you do find all the different layers. Yeah, you know. Absolutely, well, the, uh, the insurance carriers have done multiple cores, but they've done them in a straight line on the same slope. Oh, and I so, see. of course, you're gonna get the same result. Right, so you, here you actually have more layers than the other side. Absolutely. So that's gonna have a mu uh, much greater impact on your estimate for tear off and, and what you go back with. Absolutely. Nice, I see you sealed it up properly here, so we're not gonna have any more leaks in that area. 